So we're just at this kind of warehouse in the middle of nowhere in Iowa, right, Paul? That's right. Yeah, we're just kind of hanging out. You know, we got the uh, Bowers TGC mobile in motion and uh, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. We're at Brunel's, super excited. This retail store is absolutely massive. Look at the size of this freaking building. That's the retail store. Then all back there is warehouse. Felix is ready. Look, he's there. He's ready. That's like a Let's go. square feet. Is it? You think it's that big? We'll have to ask him. Genevieve, how big do you think this is? I don't know. Super. 10 million. 10 million. <laughs> all right, here we go. Right, and uh, the reason we have the retail store now is because for years and years and years, folks would go all the way down to Montezuma and order stuff from the block. In fact, it's been such a thing. Yeah. And they did so much business out of the lobby, they said, oh, maybe we ought to make a retail store. So yeah. behold, we got a retail store. Behold. Behold. <laughs> Uh, and I'll point out that we're going to end up back in the retail store. This is also where the tour is, so you'll be back in here. But um, coolest thing about the retail store, there's lots of places you can handle guns. <coughs> At any given time, we have all between around 1,200 to 1,500 guns, both new and used. Goodness in here. gracious. But I think the coolest feature is over here in the corner where you see all the stock blanks. You've got AR 15 chassis and Ruger 1022 stock blanks. Every single one of those has some sort of scope or optic mounted on it. There's not a lot of places that you can go get your hands on, say, like a $2,000 Night Force scope and try it out out the big window. And that's also why we have the deer decoy. One's at like 106 yards, one's like at 207 yards. We're going to go look at that. Yeah, yeah. Let's go check that out. We've got to go. we got to go see that. That's a neat idea. The, and I'm a gun guy. So here's what he was just talking about. Yeah. All these. Find a good one. This is amazing. Plus the binos up by the window. And the, 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 the stock, I mean the scopes, here's here's a $1,900 mic Just right here. There you go. I'm such an attitude. We have to provide our own guns. But yes, we still provide guns. Caffeine fuel. Can you, Roy, can you touch the screen? Never mind. There we go. Pew, pew, pew. The sound effects are what make it cool. Yeah, that's clearly how this works. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't make noises with. Well, what was that? I want a gun that does that. Do you guys sell those? <laughs> that's a lot of wheel guns. So there's lots of gun stores. I've been in lots of really cool gun stores, but Brownells does have kind of a unique advantage when it comes to being a gun store. If you see our computers right here on the wall, our retail store is about 7,000 square feet, but anything we sell at all on the website or in the catalog, you can access through this computer system over here and you can order it and it will ship to you from the warehouse, which this retail store is attached to physically, and it will ship to you in about, oh, 10 or 15 minutes out here to the cash register. In fact, we've got a TV screen over here on the wall. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see a name in tan and one in brown. Those are people whose orders are being picked. So you can keep looking around the store. And when your order is ready at the cash register, uh, your name will turn green. It'll be either light green or dark green. 
So we're, as far as I know, about the only place that you can come, you can come buy a used AR-15. We do deal in used guns. And then you, as, as you're filling out the form 4473, you can have on order on the way up to the cash register for you, a thousand rounds of ammo, 20 mags, a new stock, a new end, an optic, a cleaning kit, a case, anything else. I mean, cans of tactical bacon, whatever you want. <laughs> if it's for sale on our website, you can, and it's not, it's not here physically on the store. You can order it to the store and it'll be here in about 10 or 15 minutes. Honestly, I, I don't know of any shop. Well, one, most people don't have the ability to have the warehouse and, right. and do that right. sort right. of They're call out. Connected to it, that that reminds me a lot of uh, B&H Photo in New York City. Uh -huh. cool. um, they've got like conveyors all through their mm -hmm. shop, which is really interesting. Yep. But this is kind of taking it to a new level for the uh, gun world. Oh, we're going to go see the conveyor system here. So. Oh, I'm excited. Yep. Are you excited? I'm excited about everything. Felix, Felix, are you excited? Super excited. <laughs> so Bob's an entrepreneur living in Montezuma, Iowa. One of the things he's got going on is he's got a gas station and sandwich shop on Highway 63. And this, of course, before the interstate highway system. We all drove here on Interstate 80. Interstates don't exist to like, what, the 60s, 50s, 60s? Sure. Eisenhower administration starts the building of the interstate. <coughs> Excuse me. So Bob's on one of the central north-south highways in the middle of the United States. He's got a sandwich shop and a gas station, but he's got a problem. He's probably got Meniere's disease, which is an inner ear condition, and he's also allergic to the alcohol fumes that are common in car radiators at the time. So there are days at a time when Bob is just laid out flat on his back with debilitating dizziness. And he finds he can still do small mechanical jobs on his chest to make money like work on his buddy's guns. And he's very much a gun guy. In fact, he's a gunsmith, and one of the things he's passionate about is bluing jobs. Here's a picture of him loading up a polishing wheel to get a nice buff shine. We're visiting him in summer 2019. Of course, you have a lion preying on a zebra. You've got some frightened gazelles over there. You know, on the newer taxidermy, they try to put the animals in more lifelike poses with uh, natural features, rocks, grass, etc. <laughs> the, uh, the face on the zebra is key. Right, well, you know, if a lion was trying to bite me, I'd probably look a lot like that, too. Someone's can can you that. replicate it? <laughs> there like it that. is. There it is. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> Somebody <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be people. Your, your, your sound effects are Thank on you. point today. Thank you. I was, I was trying very hard. Our collage of taxidermy on loan to us that was associated with the magazine Peterson's Hunting. Okay. That were taken in the 60s. gonna look around There's here like and uh that is just something i i don't know you're what gonna to, see that in your dreams like tonight, we we you? were there for this but that is just awful <laughs> that is something else so roy says that this is the expansion room they have extra room here what i'm saying is this is where tgc's future office is going to be we're moving to iowa this is huge we've already got a photo studio north over here that you could fit a whole person in that yeah. thing. Yeah, and we actually have a maybe two Joshes photo and video studio over at the original Montezuma facility. Wow. Yeah, and ping pong tables. Do you guys have some like seriously heated ping pong tournaments going uh, on? Some departments do. I'm never really playing ping pong. What? Are you above ping pong? No, I just never played it when I was a kid. I was out hunting squirrels with sticks. Or something. <laughs> 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 the response is I grew up in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the internet needs more of you, Roy. All right, so I, I wasn't filming, but this is amazing. So, Roy, can you can you explain that one more time? Sure, sure. This is our, our our training room, as we call it. We have lots of events in here. We do have a big screen that drops down. You'll see the array of microphones above the tables. That's these little things hanging from the right? ceiling. And they are hooked up to that to that set of cameras up there. So whenever the system is on, if we're having a teleconference with somebody and somebody in that corner says something, the cameras will turn and look at them so the people on the other end of the broadcast can see who is speaking and, and, and hear them very clearly. And what was the thing you added at the back end I, of that? I, I said, and so someday Skynet will become self-aware and we're all toast. <laughs> Sarah Connor, you're our only hope. Yeah, right, right. Part of the tour for me, because we sell about 110, 150,000 different products, 
And when I bring people on a tour, I'll say, oh my goodness, we sell that? <laughs> Sorry, honey, there goes this week's paycheck. So there's no telling what you're gonna see in here, but just some highlights. Uh, from this wall to that wall, it's 116 yards. So we can set up a 100 yard small bore silhouette competition, still have 16 yards for parking lot and spectator area. Okay. Uh, the big yellow structure, that's the pick mod. That's where the active products are. The big white stacks over there, that's where either overflow products go or oddly shaped products. But that's also where part of our FFL cages. You're gonna be blown away. On this side, uh, you're gonna see a lot of heavy bulk products like ammo and also our packaging materials and things like extra conveyor belt chunks. Um, when I order my cylinder and slide extended firing pins, up there does a machine pick them or does a person? People pick them. People pick them. People pick them. <laughs> and uh, just because of the nature of the products, and we have so many products, in fact, you see all the carts parked up there? Yep. Uh, we have many, many people. In fact, sometimes I wind up working out here as, as a picker. Say, example, uh, when we had the week-long California Magazine Freedom, it was all hands on deck. I spent about two or three days picking nothing but magazines. Wow. Yeah. It's really interesting that even though the brand has grown significantly, mm -hmm. it's it's nobody's like too good for what they're doing. You know, that sort of thing. Right. Like you guys right. jump in. We jump in. We jump in and help. And for me, I know a lot of people feel the same way, but for me personally, I work at Brownells because I am a Second Amendment advocate. So if I'm helping distribute freedom by picking 30 round magazines all day, Heck yeah, let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, you guys are always, always supporting that kind of stuff. Very proud to. Um, we'll see some HK factory stuff. We were fortunate enough to get a, a little chunk of that. I won't say exactly how, but it was a one-time deal. There'll be more up here. And again, there's no telling what you're going to see. What is this? Wolf, quality performance, 7.62 by 3.9. Some of our VRN 180 uppers. Uh, Ammo, ammo, ammo. Oh my God, look at all the freaking ammunition. Yeah. It's just, oh my God, I want to bathe in it. Yeah. I come down here and just walk around. All right, here you go. Reloading presses, concentricity. There's a pallet of concentricity tools. You have an M249 you need to be. 800 link cartridges, 5.56. Oh my God! We got 800 round belts of 556. That's a, that's belted ammo. That's belted ammo. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Right over here. And there's a pallet of it. There's a pallet of it. And unless we've sold it all, oh yeah, uh, you got an M240? I don't, but yeah. maybe I should buy one. Yeah, here's a 500 7.62 by 5. Oh my goodness! Yeah, link 308. Again, there is no telling what you're. I, I think our, our, our complete HK416 parts kits may have already sold out. I'd have to check the website. They, they sold out They real sold fast. out. And then we also have lots and lots of, not enough parts for a complete kit, but if you want an authentic HK416 military factory original upper, we've got those. We've got various other pieces, parts in the original. That's all shotgun ammo. Oh my goodness. Anytime we have like a senator, a governor, or a presidential candidate come through, insured dignitary, we come to the photo op of the look. We can see the entire operation. You can see the conveyor system with boxes moving. Oh, Kevin's yeah. A team of folks over here getting boxes packaged and ready to go out the door. Uh, truck bay number six. Oh, that's, that's being loaded out that's there? That's either being loaded or unloaded. I'm not sure which. Hard to tell. At the old facility in Montezuma, I think we had six truck bays. Here we have 17. Oh, my goodness. We also have the smart uh, pick system. All the oh, yeah, totes there's... have a barcode on them, a barcode reader. So instead of the picker being responsible for the entire warehouse floor, the pickers are responsible for a zone, and the totes know what's in the order that's being picked in them. So the conveyor system takes it to the section of the warehouse where that stuff is. So instead of 13 miles a day, which is what pickers would walk in the old warehouse, it's right around four or five miles a day. That's tolerable. That's tolerable, right. And uh, that's, I, like I said, anytime there's a huge demand thing, I'll wind up out here too. Uh, the blue and green boxes, that's called the put to light. 
and you see some some totes here on the down escalator on the mm -hmm. downhill after a, a a tote is completely picked and the system senses it and you have to get a little scanner and you scan as you as you pick stuff so it knows the system knows when it's all picked the barcode will read it Let's see if i get lucky here nope it'll get rerouted down there and go to the put to light station where somebody at the put to light station will scan each product will scan the manifest of the order then scan each product and it will blink a light which box you put it in oh wow and for example on election day 2016 <laughs> i did uh the day before election day and election day i did two eight hour shifts down to put the light and didn't touch anything but 30 round magazines for two days you're kidding me <laughs> oh my funny. god it was, it was crazy 24 hours uh yeah there's a there's a usually have two shifts it looks like they let a lot of the pickers go but we still have folks shipping but not for 24 hours pretty much uh if you get an order into us that has all in stock products and you don't have any weird or unusual things going on with your order if it's all in stock and you get us the order by about 11 o'clock central standard time it's not a hundred percent but it's like 97 percent chance it's on a truck and out of here that afternoon wow yeah everything i've ever ordered has, has come real real quick and we, we, that we try yeah. real hard to get it out the door as quickly as possible how many shipments a day on average uh i don't know and that would Some probably be proprietary <laughs> yeah. evaluation, but it's it's insane it's absolutely insane guys these things are just rolling right along yep and I'm sure when, when you guys are really rolling come election season, this thing is chock full. Or even just during the day, I mean, it'll be nose to tail, nose to tail, just totes coming through. Wow. Okay, anywhere you see a red light, and you're gonna see red lights at various places, there's gonna be a fire extinguisher with about 15 feet. And a lot of these red lights, I don't see one right here, but a lot of these also have an electronic defibrillator uh, for a first aid heart attack situation. But um, as you go down, we're gonna go down. Uh, we drop several products a week and we pick up several products a week. So it's slowly ever increasing the number of products. And so products go on the shelf according usually to how they're picked up. So for example, we have black nitrile gloves. We've got a Winchester Model 12 unfinished buttstock set. We've got Hornady double lock buckshot right there for reloading five pounds of buckshot. Um, 25 Remington, if anybody's watching this, shoots 25 Remington, you need dies, we got 25 Remington. <laughs> okay. Uh, Magpul, what's this? Oh, Zukov, Zukov handguards, right? There's no telling what you're gonna find. This is really, this is so complex it's a too. candy store. Uh, Mechgar, 1911, seven round 1911 magazine. Paul, keep your hands inside the cart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, oh, Geisley triggers, you like Geisley triggers? Is that just a bin of guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bin of guys and right? Oh my goodness. Right. Uh, Streamlight flashlights, tactical lights, streamlight pack lights. There's no telling. Down to little bitty things such as. Yeah, there's a bunch of small small bins here. Beretta extractor. Right? Just Beretta like extractor. A, all right. Just right there. So I like to say if it goes in a gun, on a gun, through a gun, or it is a gun, or a gun goes in it, we got it. <laughs> Have you had to modify that statement over the years? Uh, yes, because we didn't used to sell guns. So I had to add, it is a gun. When I first started working here, we did not sell guns. But, oh, seven millimeter TCU. If anybody is a seven millimeter, seven millimeter TCU shooter, we got dies for you. <laughs> Roy, we did, uh, oh boy. Now, before I walk in you know here, I'm going to tell you something. Says explosives, you've got to go in there. So I did a I did a video of Paul's reloading setup. Mm -hmm. It's got like uh, over a million views, mm -hmm. just randomly. Oh dear God! Check this out. This is the powder room. The, the powder room. The powder this room. is a cute powder room. I like what you've room. done with it. Yeah. So you know, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six shelves high, all the way down, stacked to the ceiling, just kind of point up and go in a circle. Oh this my goodness. More powder than I have at home. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Is it really? <laughs> it just keeps Got that. going. It does mm -hmm. have that something to it. Yeah, this is the powder room. They used to be our powder room slash FFL cage. We start selling guns as a major podcast. We have to go cage. Yeah, I, I can imagine this would not suffice. Good work, babe. <laughs> We do not sell black powder because the black powder is chemically an explosive. You, uh, you sell, sell substitutes? Yes, we do sell some black powder like triple seven and stuff like that. Gym shots, golds, etc. 
But uh, wow. we have all kinds of stories. That is an understatement. So this is yes. the expanded FFL cage? Part of the FFL cage. Part of it. I like to call this Freedom Canyon. Huh? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's all the way to the ceiling, all the way down. Guns, guns, guns. There's just a couple in there? Just a few. Oh my like lord. So, so Roy, is the stuff up top, is that all like backfill for this stuff here? Uh, it can be. Uh, say a company, for us to get a price break, we've got to buy 300 or something, but we only have room for 100 on the shelf over there. The extra 200 will come over here and they'll feed it. Okay, I so see. So they really make get creative with making use of the space. I was talking about the order system for the retail store. Above you is the conveyor. And it goes down to the retail store. So it comes around and then swings down. Okay. It's a strange area. These are all guns, by the way. All of these. Oh, that's it. Those are in layaway. They'll do layaway for customers and their employees. Uh, lots of pistols in here. Lots of rifles. Here are the boxes for the pistols. And also, whenever a used gun comes into the store, if the used gun comes in this box, right? Or a case, that box or case will wind up out here. So when somebody buys it in the store, they can get the box or the case as well. Uh, one of the things that Brownells does do <laughs> is a few times a year, uh, products that get returned that are in otherwise perfectly fine working shape that we can't return to a factory or whatever reason that, that end up here, they will put on an employee auction. That's interesting. And this is one of the reasons why when I started at Brownells, I had three AR-15s. And now I don't know how many I have, <laughs> but I have them in 11 different calibers. Wow. All right. Yeah. All right. Because, <laughs> you know, holy crap, somebody gave me a barrel. Oh, got to build a gun. Mm -hmm. hey, what's, what's the most obscure caliber that you have in an AR? In an AR, uh, it was 545 by 39, but I couldn't get it to run. So, okay. so, so I swapped it back to 556. Probably, uh, probably, I've got 50 Beowulf and 450 Bushmaster and 458 SOCOM. See, yes. this, there are more reasons why you and I get along. Yeah. Because big bore in an AR is the oh, only yeah. way. Yeah, and I'm wanting a 375 next, I think. The... The JDJ or whatever. The three, who, who does the 375? I don't know. Yeah, somebody does. This tour was awesome, too. Oh, thank, thank, you. You doing, thank you. for much. And that's the conveyor system for people who order stuff at the retail store. And just so work. can I hop on and give it a try? Uh... <laughs> Go for it. As long as there's no video evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. I can hear. Goodness. Thus concludes our tour of the Brownells facility. The sun has gone down. We're about to go get some Mexican food in Grudel, Iowa. <laughs> but uh, thanks for tagging along, guys. See you next time.